from his possible matchup with the dangerous Kelvin Gastelum to his odds of plus 1100 to win a title by the end of 2023. Here's all you need to know about Shavkat Rachmanov's next fight. First off, let me address the burning question on everyone's mind. Who will Nomad face in his next fight? As of early summer 2023, things were still a bit up in the air, but there were rumors suggesting that the 28-year-old could square off against Kelvin Gastelum, who was making his return to the welterweight division. But the welterweight scene got a bit chaotic after Leon Edwards defended his title against Kamaru Usman in a rematch back in March 2023. And right after his majority decision win in London, Edwards was informed that Colby Covington, a two-time title challenger, was up next. Now this raised a few eyebrows because Covington had a 2-2 two two record in his last four fights and had only won once in over a year since his last loss. This totally unexpected twist left the Kazakhstani fighter in a pretty tough spot. On the same night that Covington was given the next challenger spot, Rachmanov was linked to a potential matchup with Bilal Muhammad, who was widely seen as the rightful next title contender. But if Nomad fought Muhammad, it would mean having to wait behind Covington, which didn't seem fair. Then, UFC 288 happened, but the co-main event between Charles Oliveira and Benil Dariush ended up getting canceled. That's when Muhammad stepped in on short notice and faced Gilbert Burns, winning by unanimous decision and solidifying his position as the next contender behind Covington. Now, Burns could have been an option for the young welterweight, but in stroke of bad luck, he suffered multiple upper body injuries in his loss to Muhammad, delaying his return. With most of the other top 10 fighters already booked or tied to immediate title scenarios, the matchup with Gastelum started to gain traction. But here's the big question. Does a matchup with Gastelum really make sense for the Kazakh fighter right now? The 28-year-old is sitting pretty at number six in the rankings, and if he manages to take down a big name like Gastelum, it'll send shockwaves through the entire division. But let's not forget, securing a win from Gastelum is not as easy as it sounds, and this dude is making a bold move by stepping up to the 170-pound weight class. And if he goes straight for someone like Shafkat, who's on the brink of cracking the top five, it would be a huge statement for his own title aspirations. These two fighters are so well known, they could easily headline a fight night card or be a major highlight of a blockbuster pay-per-view event. So yeah, the Gastelum vs. Rachmanov matchup would be a total banger, with both fighters having a lot to gain and even more to prove. There were a couple of other possibilities for Nomad's next bout, and one was Hamzat Chimaev, but it seemed unlikely since he moved up to middleweight. So former champ Kamaru Usman stepped in when we needed him and said he was interested to fight Chimaev, but that also meant he had to move up to 185 pounds. Usman versus Rachmanov does seem like a logical and exciting matchup since they're both perfect tests for each other. Usman wants to prove he's still capable of reclaiming his title. And what better way to do it than by fending off one of the most dangerous rising stars, aka Nomad? Well, whoever he ends up fighting is for sure going to be an epic nail biter. You see, Shavkat's MMA record is nothing short of extraordinary. In the early stages of his career, he was absolutely flawless. He competed in 17 fights and won every single one of them flawlessly. The Kazakh fighter has this amazing blend of grappling and precision striking skills that make him finish a fight with so much diversity that it's truly impressive. Out of his 17 fights, he had an almost even record with nine submissions and eight knockouts. In fact, even his debut in the UFC was a statement in itself. He secured a first-round guillotine choke win over the seasoned veteran Alex Cowboy Oliveira, which caught the attention of lots of odds makers. From then on, Rachmanov became a favorite in his next six bookings, with no worse than minus 280 Moneyline odds in his favor. As a former M1 Global and Kazakhstan Mixed Martial Arts Federation champion, the welterweight hardly even saw the third round. He only went that far twice, with nine of his wins coming in the first round. He's been dangerous in the ring right from the get-go, so it's no surprise that in his second UFC appearance, Rachmanov claimed another victim, and this time, it was Michael Prezeris. Prezeris had been on an impressive eight-fight winning streak before facing Kazakh fighter, and is known for his grappling and Brazilian jiu-jitsu skills. So he was expected to put up a challenge, but he was no match for Shavkat, and suffered his first and only career defeat through submission. It's clear that Nomad's a pretty tactical guy. And while his grappling skills are always on display, he likes to damage his opponents with his striking first, before going for a potential submission. A huge example of this was his bout against Carlston Harris, and it seemed like the fight was heading towards a similar finish, 
but Nomad delivered a highlight reel moment with a first round spinning wheel kick. After that impressive win, the 28-year-old became a favorite in all his bouts that followed with odds no worse than minus 320E. The promotion saw Rachmanov's potential as an undefeated finishing machine, and that's why they matched him up against Neil Magny, who holds the record for the most wins in the division. Despite Magny's vast experience, he was no match for Shafkat's dominance, and Nomad controlled the fight right from the first round as he unleashed his ground and pound. The punishment continued into the second round, ultimately leading to Magny tapping from a guillotine choke. Now, there's no doubt that Shavkat's MMA record speaks volumes about his skills, and his fight against Jeff Neal makes that extremely clear. It was an absolute thriller, and without a doubt, his most competitive matchup to date. Neal was on a blazing hot streak leading up to the fight, and he entered the octagon with a chip on his shoulder, carrying plus 333 betting odds against Rachmanov's minus 560. The welterweights wasted no time in unleashing a storm of heavy shots on each other, but here's where Nomad truly shines. His clinch work was on a whole other level, delivering punishing elbows and tight punches that overwhelmed Neil. The fight was set up to be a really long battle that would go the distance, and it seemed like it would boil down to a decision. But Shavkat had other plans and had to keep his finishing streak alive, which is exactly what he did. In the late stages of the fight, Shavkat was in charge and calling the shots, while Magni tried his hardest to get back on his feet. But things didn't go well for him and he ended up in a vulnerable position where Shavkat had a tight hold on his neck ready to finish him off with a guillotine choke with only a few seconds left in the fight. Shavkat sealed the deal and added another finish to his record. It looks like this guy's resume is full of achievements, and even as an amateur, he was no stranger to success. He actually won two gold and silver medals in the World Mixed Martial Arts Association, so it's clear that this guy is destined for even greater things in the world of MMA. Speaking of greater things, let's talk about his championship odds. In the first half of 2023, the odds makers at DraftKings Sportsbook gave him odds of plus 1,100 to win a title by the end of the year. But it wasn't a favorable bet, considering that there were already a lot of other strong competitors in the division because of Dana White's decision to grant the chaos a title shot. This decision really decreased Rachmanov's chances of getting an opportunity to fight, and realistically speaking, unless something crazy happens, like a bunch of fighters getting hurt, Nomad probably won't get a shot at the title in 2023, especially with Covington and Bilal Muhammad ahead of him in the queue. Leon Edwards, the reigning champ, will face either Covington or Muhammad in his next title defense, and that's going to be the last welterweight title fight of 2023. Now, if Nomad were to secure a high-profile matchup against someone like Kamaru Usman, Gilbert Burns, or Kelvin Gastelum, a successful performance could get him closer to a title shot. But like I said, fight fans are going to have to wait this one out until 2024. So while the Kazakh fighter definitely has the potential to fight for a title in the future, it seems unlikely that it'll happen within the year. But who knows? The world of MMA is full of surprises, and Nomad's talent and determination could lead to a title shot sooner than you think. So, from oddsmakers giving him odds of plus 1,100 to win a title by the end of 2023, to his possible matchup with the dangerous Kelvin Gastelum, that's all you need to know about Shavkat Rachmanov's next fight.